Uh, and this morning, I want to go ahead and start with a quick prayer. Let's bow our heads. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, God, thank you so much, God, for uh, just the opportunity to worship you this morning. Yeah. God, I'm so grateful that you uh, have forgiven me of my sins even this week. Mm -hmm. I know uh, a lot of us have had a tough week, God, and, and yet our sins are still forgiven, yes. Father. And God, we're so grateful that we can worship you even on Mother's Day. Yeah. God, uh, I pray, pray, God, that you would remove anything that would get in the way out of the way, God, so that we can hear your message that you're going to give to us this morning. God, we love you, and uh, we pray all this in your son Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So, guys, I want to uh, definitely welcome you this morning on Mother's Day, and we've got an amazing gift for all the mothers and the ladies this morning. Uh, right now, we're going to go ahead and give you a flower because you're special. You guys are special. Amen. Amen. And so, right now, uh, the pass out flowers and we're, we're super grateful for the mothers uh in the tucson church thank you uh we're extremely grateful for all that you do for raising our children and uh just serving the way you do and uh got guys just from the bottom of our hearts yes we love you a ton amen amen awesome and so i hope you have a glorious amazing mother's day this Come morning on. If you don't know who I am, I'm Scott Lundy, and I lead the Tucson International Christian Church. And uh, we are a sold-out group of disciples yes. Come on. Come on. with a purpose to evangelize the world in our generation. And I say that every single Sunday, every don't time, I? Yeah. I love it. Why? Because we can't forget. Yeah. Right? We can't just be focused here on Tucson. We've got to be focused on uh, the surrounding cities and then the world. Yeah. And we saw that even in the GNN video. I love the GNN video, yeah. guys, because we can see what's going on around the world. Right. Yeah. And, and you got to know that it started with a small group just like this. Yeah, that's true. I was actually in that group yeah. of 25 yeah. people sitting yeah. in a small college room. Yep. Yeah. And, uh, and, and, and here we even have more than 25 people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but, guys, I hope that uh, you're going to have an amazing Mother's Day. And, you know, I was thinking about Mother's Day, and what better mother to think about than my very young. Aww, Aww, come on. My mother, Anne Marie Lundy. Aww, come on. And uh, she's uh, very shy, um, but yet very bold so in the things that she believes in. Yes, she is. Mm. Um, she's an author of two books. Yeah. Wow. She wrote a children's book, mm -hmm. and she wrote a Christian book. Mm -hmm. wow. And she got straight A's in school. Yeah, she got straight A's in high school. I don't even think she even got a B. Mm -hmm. And then in college, she got a couple B's, but mostly A's. Yeah, and, and it was a, a tall order to, to live up to my mom's expectations right. I bet. True. in school. And I remember she would correct all my papers. I was like, "Okay, I'm done, mom." And she's like, "Let me see it." <laughs> and then she would get all the the red and, and just go through it. And then I'd be like, oh, I guess I'm not done. But I knew that when I turned my paper and I was getting an A. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But my mom was very concerned about making sure we did well in school. Mm -hmm. And my mom, she wrote very eloquently. Yeah. She was also a great uh, artist as well. We have some uh, pictures that she's painted in, in my office right uh -huh. now. Mm. But uh, I like, like to say my mom was wicked smart. Oh, <laughs> yes. She was super smart. And... Uh, uh, she taught in the public school system for over 20 years. Yeah. I dare say probably more like 30. Mm -hmm. um, and she dealt with, like Jamie said, a, a very rebellious, mm -hmm. delinquent uh, young man. Yeah. Come on. But the good thing is that she would pray for me yeah, all the time. Oh, yeah. She would even pray in front of me. And it would be embarrassing. I'd be like, Mom, no. Stop praying for me right now. Because she was like, I'm praying to God because your behavior right now and I'd be like, ugh, but she loved me that much. Okay. And she would push me to the scriptures too. Yeah. I'd be like, I don't want to read the Bible. She goes, go read your Bible. It might change your heart, it might change your life. Mm -hmm. And I and I remember even, okay, well, I'm not reading the New Testament because it's boring. <laughs> so I would read the Old Testament and I'd get into the battles and everything like that. But I uh -huh. read my Bible. And because of that, I knew the Old Testament when I finally started studying the Bible when I was older. I knew the Old Testament because of my mother. Um, my mom, she worked very hard to take care of three children, myself and my two sisters. Mm -hmm. And uh, we didn't have a lot of money growing up. And yet she would always save money 
and she would always make sure that we were taken care of. I remember even one time I wanted to be stylist. I, I, I think I was a freshman and she bought me brand new uh, corduroys. She bought me two pairs Ooh, and, yeah. uh, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I wanted them and I knew my mom didn't have the money. Yeah. She bought them and then I got into skiing uh, when I was a uh, sophomore in high school and that's a very expensive yeah. sport. And yet she bought me a brand new jacket. She bought me ski pants. She wanted to make sure that I had an opportunity in life. Yeah. Um, um, but she was, she was always giving to God. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that later. Um, but she held me to a standard of discipline. So much so that I didn't like it. And she would even bring out the wooden spoon. Right. And I was, I was like, you're not going to spank me. And I'd be running around. She'd be trying to whack at me. And I'd be like, Woo-hoo! you know, I'd be like, no. And I'd be running away, trying to get away from that. Uh, but she was like, you're going to get it when you get yeah. home because my, because my dad didn't play around. Um, so I knew that I was going to get it either way. And, and, and when he came home, I was like, okay, I'm going to get it. <laughs> um, but my mom made sure of it because she, she loved us and she wanted to make sure that I wouldn't go to prison someday. Right. So, because that's the truth. If, if, if she wouldn't have, have disciplined and she wouldn't, she wouldn't have made sure that I was following, uh, the ways of the land if, if I wasn't. Uh, obedient that that's exactly where I would go right and I almost still went that's for another story <laughs> but I wouldn't be the man I am today if it wasn't for my mother yeah she taught me all the life lessons that I needed all the good qualities about me I believe came from my mother I was thinking about that today it's like all the good qualities came from my mother mm-hmm. and I'm grateful for my mother and so mom if you're listening to, to me today I just want to tell you I love you. Come on, Scott, we love you. <laughs> so this morning, guys, I have uh, some questions for you, though. Okay. Well, I will start with questions yes. right? uh, on this Mother's Day. Do you have love enough to tell somebody the truth even mm. when it hurts? Do you communicate? Do you feel like you're a good communicator? What about the, the do you communicate with the person that you don't want to communicate with? Do you pray for people? Do you pray for people that hurt you? Mm. Are you considering yourself even this morning as a loving person? Are you a loving person? Mm. Are you willing to serve and love people even when they hurt you? Because that's the thing I think about when I think about my mother. That's what I think about with mothers. That's what they do. Do you guys understand what I'm saying? And so the title of the lesson this morning that I have for you this morning is a mother's heart. This is a mother's heart. You guys see that? Yes. Mm -hmm. And my points this morning is point one, a mother's intuition. You know, a mother has that intuition. We're going to talk a little bit about that. My second point, a mother's heart. Talk about the deepness of a mother's heart. And then the last question and the last point a mother's love. Amen. Do you have a mother's love? And so I wanted to look at three interactions between Mary and Jesus. Okay. And Jesus and Mary. Cool. The relationship yeah. that they have. It's super important to see that. And so let's look at the first point, a mother's intuition. Mm-hmm. And I was thinking, what is intuition? Think about that. What is that? We, we kind of understand it. So I looked it up in the dictionary. Mm-hmm. This is the ability to understand Mothers just seem to understand, don't they? Yes. You, you, who do you turn to? A lot of times you turn to your mother. She, she just understands me. Uh, you guys felt that? She just yeah. knows me, understands me. But you know, perhaps a mother knows their child. They do. They think they don't. They have to be being older. They know their child. Come on. Come on, Deborah. Come on. So with it says the ability to understand something mm. immediately. Mm. Right. Without the need for conscious reasoning. So like she said. There's no need to think about it. They know it. That's right. Do you remember a time when your mother told you the truth? Yeah. Remember that? <laughs> we didn't like it so much, right? <laughs> Jesus. Where are you? Where, oh. are you? where are you heading to? Oh. Where are you heading to? I don't like that. You shouldn't go to that place. Mm-hmm. Mom, you don't understand me. You don't understand what I'm going through. Yes, I do. You shouldn't go there. What are you all about? You know. I'll say one day my wife, my, uh, not my wife, but my mom, she, she's like, what are you all about? Mm-hmm. Or what do you think you're all about? Mm-hmm. And then the, con- the consequences, you remember that? 
So I was sharing the consequences. Well, if you do that, these, these might be the consequences. Uh -huh. did, your mom didn't do that with you? My mom did that with me. Don't do that. This yeah. might be the consequence. Yes. Wow. This might happen if you do this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because my mom wanted to tell me the truth. Yeah. And like I said, the truth sometimes yeah. hurts. Yeah. Let's go to John 2. Yes, it does. John 2, 1 through 12. Yes, and this yeah. is a story about Jesus changing water into wine. Can I get an amen when you get there? Amen. John 1. John 2. I'm sorry, John 2. We're there. Oh, John 2? Yeah, John 2, 1 through 12. Wow. It says, on the third day, a wedding took place at Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there, and Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, they have no more wine. Woman, why do you involve me? Jesus replied, my hour has not yet come. Sometimes we think, Mom, why are you involved me? I, I've said that before. But Mom, why are you getting me involved with this? Mother's intuition. Mm. His mother said to the servant, do whatever he tells you. Mm -hmm. Nearby stood six stone water jars, the kind used by the Jews for ceremonial washing, each holding from 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus said to the servant, fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, now draw some out and take it to the master of the banquet. They did so. And the master of the banquet tasted the water that had been turned into wine. He did not realize where it had come from, though the servant who draw, draw the water knew. Then he called the bridegroom aside and said, everyone brings out the choice wine first and then a cheaper wine after the guests have had too much to drink. But you have saved the best to last. And you know, or to, uh, till now, and you know what happens here is that in a wedding, they put the cheap wine, they, 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 or the good wine out first, mm -hmm. right? And then, they, and then when they get, they, they drink it, then they, they, they put the bad stuff out, mm -hmm. right? And so... It was good from the very start. Mm -hmm. And they already had wine. And so the, the stuff that he made was the best. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's super encouraging. Mm -hmm. After this, he went down to Capernaum with his mother and brothers and disciples. And you see there that there, there's the mother and the brothers, and they're hanging out with Jesus yep. everywhere he went. Yep. It says in verse 11, what Jesus did here in Cana of Galilee was the first of the signs through which he revealed his glory, and his disciples believed him. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, Jesus is like, it's not my time yet. Mm -hmm. And yet, Jesus' mother was like, you don't understand, though. These are the people I love. Mm -hmm. you, you know, they're, they're, they're having a hardship right now. Yeah. Can you do something? Right. And because of the mother's intuition, it moved Jesus to, to go ahead and start early. Mm -hmm. He could have wow. waited. He yeah. could have waited a month. He could have waited a year. He's like, you know, let's get this thing going. Yeah. And why? Because he honored his mother. Mm -hmm. He honored and respected and he loved his mother. Yes. Is that the heart that you have for your mother? Mm -hmm. Is that the heart that you have for the mothers in this room? Wow. Mm -hmm. Although Jesus wasn't ready to love and to show the miracles like that, he went ahead and started anyway mm -hmm. because he loved his mom. Yeah. That's awesome. She did. Personally, I was thinking about my, my mother again and growing up, um, she always had the heart to take care of people. And you see Mary's heart to take care of the people here. Yeah. And my mom, she had that same heart, you know, for our neighbors, she would knit uh, scarves and she would knit gloves for the children of our oh. neighbors. Um, she would provide for them, even have people over all the time, invite them over for lunch, invite them over for dinner. She's very hospitable. And then at what really, uh, changed my heart uh and just in, in endured my heart to my mom is my best friend in high school he got kicked out of his his parents house mm -hmm. and uh what does that mean he's probably going to drop out of school right because you know he's on the streets right. um but my mom advocated uh to my dad that he could stay with us because we, we had a spare room wow. and uh so my dad agreed and so he stayed with us for a year kurt and then he graduated from, from high school. Wow. And it's because my mom's intuition, knowing that if he didn't have a place to live, 
the chances were he wasn't going to graduate. Yeah, true. Mom. But my mom's heart to love deeply. That goes how to go. Mom. Yep, just like to go. Mary, to mm -hmm. love the people deeply. Like Jesus and Mary, do you have the heart to love like this? Do you have the heart to love people deeply in Tucson? Do you have the heart to open up your homes? Do you have that heart? Or are you just waiting for the Lundies to do that? Or are you just waiting for the Hockenholz to do that? Open up your homes to the lost. Have people over for lunch. Have people over for dinner. To be generous. Giving of your time, your energy, and your resources. I love this. The, the, it was a, a brief lesson for us this morning on contribution. Mm -hmm. Amen. And we need that sometimes. We need a calling out to remember to give. Yeah. And I want to talk about that too. The heart to give. My first job, I think I had my first job when I was 12. It was a paper route. And, and I, guys, I was rolling. <laughs> I was making a lot of money. And, and if I didn't have the customers, I would go and get the customers. I, would, I was a very good salesman. So I could go and, 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 and sell a paper to you Sunday and the whole week. Um, and I could do it. And, and I had my own little area that I had. And I could do my paper route in probably about 45 minutes in the morning. Mm -hmm. And I'd fly through those streets and I'd be hitting the doors <laughs> and the vans and everything, but I'd get, I'd get it done, right? Mm -hmm. But I was making money. And even I, I had side jobs where I was collecting cans and bottles. My dad had these bins in the garage and I would toss them in, you know, before I went to school. Mm -hmm. And so I had all these other, and then, I, but the thing was, my mom knew that I had a lot of money. So she's like, you need to give. You need wow. to Tight. I'm like, I need a what? <laughs> she realized, what, what, what do you mean? She's like, you got to give at least 10%. I'm like, 10%? That's like $10, $15 from $100. <laughs> it's way too much. She, but she, she made me give, and she helped me to see the importance of tithing when I was young. And then it just seemed that all these opportunities started coming up. I even got a better paper route. And then on Saturdays, I was stuffing new newspapers with those, you know, those ads, you know, and for the Sunday paper, I was making even more money. Mm -hmm. And then I got to go to Disney. I've told you this many times. I went to Disneyland like five times, oh, you know, because I was rolling, but it's because I was tithing to God. Yeah. And I think my mom, because yeah. she helped instill that yeah. a mother's intuition. Think about your mother. Why did I listen? Why did I respect that? Because I saw it in my mom's life, mm -hmm. even with her giving. She didn't have a lot of money. And, and we were actually, to be honest with you, and I'm not bashing any churches, but we were involved in a church that was, that was, that was using money for the wrong reasons. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know that. And my mom didn't know that. But my mom, she had a conviction that once it left her hands, it was in God's control and who would right. do what That's he right. would do with the money. Right. And so my mom gave a lot of money to the church because she was not giving it to the church. She was giving it to God. That's and right. I saw that and I was like, you know what? I'm going to do the same thing. And so I don't even never question it. When I, when we give and we give every single week, uh, when I give, I don't even question it because I know God's going to take care of it. Yeah. Yeah, when we give missions, I don't care at that point when it leaves my hands because I know God's going to do what he's going to do with yeah. his money. Does God need your money? No. no. He doesn't need your money because it's about your heart. It's like what Mike was saying. It's about your heart to give. And so looking at my mom, I had, I had great respect, honor, and love. Just like Jesus had great honor, respect, and love for his mother. Does God and others see that type of generous heart in your life? Do, do, are you learning? from the people that 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 you see with great um conviction you see with great character do you, do you look at them and go wow i'm learning from them and i want to do that same thing where did i get a lot of my convictions and giving I, I saw some other people do it and i'm like look at what god is doing in their life yes and when i wasn't giving because i was single for a while i was a knucklehead and i wasn't giving and i had to learn again and my life didn't go very well I was having car breakdowns, flat tires, you know, all of a sudden just uh, losing hours at work. Everything just didn't seem to be working out because my heart wasn't to give to God. Do mm -hmm. so you look at other people and go, wow, I want to be like Mike. Mm -hmm. 
you know, there's a there's a commercial uh, back in the day. Um, I don't know. Bill probably remembers. You remember the uh, I want to be like Mike. Remember that one with the cereal box? Yeah. Right. Well, there, 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 was, there was this commercial where they're they're eating this this new cereal, and the two older brothers are like, "Well, I'm not eating that." Yeah. He's like, "I'm not eating that." And then they go, "Let's see if Mike Mikey likes everything." Yes. And they push it toward they push it to Mike. And, and 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 Mike, he's eating. He goes, "Look, hey, hey, Mike likes it, <laughs> right? Be like Mike, right? What's that mean? To give, to have a good, happy heart about it, amen. So this morning, I want to challenge you guys: go out to your relationship with God, so that you can learn to have that mother's intuition. Because you're going to have a struggling time to have a mother's intuition if you're not close to God." We got to look at the scriptures. We got to fill our hearts with prayer and with the scriptures. And that's the next thing I want to talk about. But we also want to give wholeheartedly to God. Yeah. This morning, let's fight to learn how to love people better. Yeah. Let's learn how to love people in the kingdom of God. And let's learn how to love the lost by looking at the example of Jesus and his mother. Amen. 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 Point to a mother's heart. The communication between his mother and Jesus. They had a great communication. His mother said, do it. And he said, okay. Yeah, there you <laughs> That's go. It's a great communication yeah. of honor, love, and respect. Amen. Do you communicate with love? Are you going to communicate with love to your mother even this morning? I'm going to call my mother. I want to challenge you to call your mother this morning. I want to, I want to challenge you to text your mother this morning. Let her know how much you love her. And, you know, I know my mom was excited that I was born. I know that she was excited and that she loved me and she had great plans for me. And I, I was thinking about what did Mary think about when she had Jesus? And so we're going to begin turning to Luke chapter 1, verse 46. And we're going to look at how, Jesus, uh, how Mary felt about Jesus, how she communicated with God about Jesus, how she communicated and talked about uh, in prayer, what she felt about Jesus. She might have even sang about Jesus. A mother's love. You guys there? Luke chapter 1? Yes. 46 through 45. I'm not there yet. 46. 46. 45. 46. 46 through 55. Oh, okay. Come on, bro. Come on. I'm coming. You got this. I'm almost there. All right. It says Mary's song. So right there, she's singing. Come on. It says, and Mary said, my soul glorifies the Lord. And my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. She's talking about Jesus. For he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed. She's like, you know what? I'm going to be called blessed because I was the mother of Jesus. Isn't that encouraging? Yes. For the mighty one has done great things for me. Have you thought about that? Wow. What has the mighty one done for you? Do you think about the great things he's done for you? His mercy extends to those who fear him. From generation to generation, they still happen today. The mercies are still there for you now. From generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever just as he promised our ancestors. And this is a song that she was singing to God. And you're thinking, oh, it's not about Jesus. It, it, she's singing to God. It is about Jesus because Jesus is God. Do you guys see that? So these are things to come. And she understood that. But this was the heart that she had for Jesus. And super cool. Yesterday, that's the way I felt. I felt a lot about what that 
that song was when I was driving. I was getting ready to pray to God. And uh, I think sometimes praying to God's a blast. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you, but I, I start yeah. singing and then I start listening to some music. And then I start thinking about all the things God has, has done. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go on that path. This morning was great. I was, I was praying. I was out praying for about an hour and I found a toilet seat. So you're like, like, wait, 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 talk about a toilet seat. Well, we need one. And it was brand new. It was sitting on the side of the road. I'm like, I'm taking that. <laughs> and so and God just gives me things. I don't know why. Uh, just like she was, she was, she was talking about how God gives. And then, this, no, it gets better. Then, then I found two, two rakes on the side of the road. <laughs> Brand new rakes. I'm like, wow, and it's on the side of the road. I didn't take them. They're on the side of the road for somebody to pick up. And I'm like, I need two rakes. Because I have three children and I only had one rake. <laughs> but that's not all. But that's not all. I found a brand new acupuncture kit. What? Yeah, what? brand new, right in the box. Hasn't even been used. Now, I don't know how I'm going to use that, but I, I was like, that's cool. I can sell it on eBay or I can share it. You know, I, it's, 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 there's nothing wrong with it. Right, it's all sealed up. I was like, who would want to get rid of that? But I was like, thank you, God. But that's not, it's just a blast <laughs> yeah. to be walking with God. Yes, it is. it's fun. It, 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 the other day, I was, I was, I was praying, and I was like, God, just help me find somebody just like me who wants to study the Bible, please, right now. And so I was, I was praying. I was walking up the hill, and then sure enough, somebody's trying to get in here real quick. But can we keep that door open? Is that possible? Yeah. Like, 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 oh, there's a concert happening? In the okay. Amen. So, again, praying is a blast. So I'm going up, trudging up a mountain, and I, and I meet this guy, Jalen. And I, I go, this is the guy. And I share my faith. He's like, you shared with me a while ago. Oh, I go, yeah, I remember. Yeah, I remember. You want to say the Bible? You said yes. He goes, yeah, I got it. I, I lost my phone and I couldn't get a hold of you, but I want to study the Bible. I'm so glad that we got together again. When can we study? He asked me, when can we study as soon as possible? And so we're studying tomorrow at nine o'clock in the morning. Because it's a blast. Praying to our God. It's awesome. And singing. Singing. I, you know, we had our first song, official song practice yesterday. Come on. And it was awesome. And we practiced all the songs. And, uh, you know, we also are ambitious and we want to have a band. Yep. We want to have a band, guys. We want to have drums. We want to have a bass. We want to have a guitarist. And we've got, we've got two musicians. We just need one more. Wow. So yeah, pray that we can have one more on, musician. On because God can, yeah, yeah, on the side of the road. And I've been at U of, U of A campus, and, and anybody that has a guitar, I've been sharing my faith with. Yeah. I accidentally shared with a guy, um, well, I didn't accidentally, but I was sharing with him, and he was like, yeah, I'm already in a band, and we're just here for the weekend. We got a, a, a gig we're doing, but thanks for the invite. I was like, darn it. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, I wanted to get him in the band. <laughs> But it's good to sing. It's good to make music. Yeah. To God. Yes. And we need to communicate in song. Guys, it's okay. Sing in the shower. Practice. But we need yeah. to communicate. You know, some of you guys might, might say, well, I don't make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Some of us were feeling that when we were practicing yesterday. It's practice. Yeah. I remember the first time I, I was asked to sing in front of the church. And I, and I butchered it. I don't know. Jamie might have been in that one. I know about I, I was singing um what was it wade in the water and I, I forgot the whole two lyrics the whole thing so I, I was trying to make Come stuff on. up and try to yeah. it, it just sounded but but I, did I give up no I and, and here's the thing nobody remembers when you mess up right no one will remember tomorrow no one will say Keanu you were just terrible at singing <laughs> yesterday no one's going to remember that no they, they're not thinking right. about that a lot of times they're not even focused on you because they're trying to learn how to sing and they're they're reading their yeah. book, right? So we're making a joyful noise to God. It's about the heart. Yes. It's not about a performance. And yet you see Jesus's mother 
singing Come on. to God. And we got to be doing that too. Communication. We're going to go through a couple of scriptures here. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 14. Come on, Scott. 1 yeah. Corinthians 14, verse 15. And I'm there this time. All right. Oh, well. okay. <laughs> so what shall I do? I will pray with my spirit, but I will also pray with my understanding. I will sing with my spirit, but I will also sing with my understanding. I love that. We can sing with our spirit, and we can sing with our understanding. We can sing to God, and we can pray to God every single day and every single week. Yes. And my question is, how's that going with you? How is your prayer life going? Mm. How is singing to God going? Again, no one cares about talent. Mm -hmm. It's about the heart. Yeah. No one cares if you can hold a note. Some of us are tone deaf. It's okay. Yeah. I'm tone deaf too. It's all right. But we got to give our whole hearts. <laughs> Let's look at Psalm 65. Psalm 65, verse 5. So let's go through a lot of these scriptures here. Psalm 65, 5. And the Bible reads, You answer us with awesome and righteous deeds. God, our Savior, the hope of all the ends of the earth and of the farthest seas. You know, I was thinking about the, the immenseness of God. The, the, it says the ends of the earth, the farthest seas. That's the, that's the God that we serve. <laughs> that's the God that we're praying to. Right. It's not sometimes we, we get in this little box, this little personal God is small, God is big. Yeah, but we gotta yeah. dream big in Tucson. We gotta dream big in Tucson, God. Yes. Are you guys okay with, with, with 26 no. disciples no. in Tucson? No, no, no. Do you guys want to get to 45, 50, and a and, and hundred? Yeah. Yeah, bro. How's that gonna happen? Yeah, we gotta pray first. Yep. And ask God for the harvest. Right. Come on. But then you got to do the work, like Michael said. Yep. Let's see. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, twenty-four. 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 Twenty-four.
Are you praying for this lost world? Are you praying for people to know God? How was your prayer life yesterday, this morning? Let's go to Colossians chapter 1. Talking about prayer, it's important. Why? Because nothing's going to happen without prayer. Right. right. Yeah. I would just be praying a prayer, but my long way, just have to stick to it. Yeah. In it. So Colossians far. 1 3, you, you bet. It says, We always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you. Mm -hmm. Are we praying for each other? I thank God for you guys all the time. When I pray for you, I pray for you guys. I, Jonathan, I prayed for you this week. Oh, come on. I prayed for you, Pam. Mm -hmm. Deborah, I pray, prayed for you. Tonya, I prayed for you. Mm -hmm. I prayed for everybody in this room. Mm -hmm. Janazo and Chisholm, I pray for you every day. Mm -hmm. Every day, I pray for you guys, Hawk and mm -hmm. Pray for you, Travis. Mm -hmm. Pray for you, come on. Isaiah. Yep. Isaiah and Chelsea, I prayed for them double yesterday. Uh, <laughs> I pray for you, Mike. I pray for you, yeah. Gina and Dan. Chanel, I pray for you. Yeah. I tell you that all the time, though. I pray for you, Bernie. Yes. I pray for you, Ken. I pray for you guys. If I didn't mention your name, I pray for you. Yep. All the time. Are we praying for each other? Are we praying for God to use us to grow? God, I'm not, I'm, I'm not the only one who has issues and challenges. Yes. We've got to pray for each other. Right. How do I know you're not praying? Well, you have an unresolved heart. Oh, yeah. A lot of times you have unresolved issues in your heart. Yeah. You? So you're not praying. Yeah. You're anxious about everything all the time. You're not praying if you're anxious all the time. Come on, right. Come on now. If you're giving into your feelings and emotions all the time, then you're not praying. Come on now. If you turn to other people all the time for input and advice, and I'm not saying that that's wrong, but if that's the first thing you turn to, then you're not praying. Yeah. Not I used to do that so often. Mm -hmm. I would go to somebody else. Well, I go to my dad, or I go to my mom, or I go to the pastor, I go, and I go, hey, what do you think? And my Jeremy would be like, did you pray? <laughs> no, I didn't pray yet. Pray first. Mm -hmm. Talk to God first. Right. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah 40, 42. Come on, Scott, this is good. Jeremiah. Mm -hmm. I always talk about prayer every Sunday. Why is that? Because mm -hmm. we need it. Pray. Yeah. That's right. How are we going to go to the next level? How are we going to do God's will? How are we going to love God with all our heart? Wow. Prayer. Jeremiah 42. You guys there? Yep. yep. Yeah. Jeremiah 42. And verse 3. Pray that the Lord your God will tell us where we should go and what we should do. That You know, I love that about my mom. She used to do that. She'd be like, where do we go? What do we do? And I was in those prayers. And then God would give us the answer. And I love the heart of Mary praying to God, talking to God yeah. about her son. Let's go to James 5. I told you you're going to go through a lot of scriptures. James 5, 14. And, you know, I did talk about going and talking to somebody else about prayer. And it talks about that even in the Bible. It says to use your cell phone and call somebody in the Bible. Did you know that? What? Let's find out. James 5, 14. It says, is anyone among you sick? Let them call the elders. There it is. <laughs> call the elders. Call the wise people. Call them up. Right. I'm just kidding. But guys, we've got to call each other up. Yeah. Right. Why? So you can confess and feel guilty and not get the help you need? No. Yeah. It says so that they can pray for you. Yeah. That's right. The prayer of a powerful person is effective. We got to call each other up. We got to, you know what? I appreciate I can call people in other states and, yeah. Yeah. and pray on the phone. Yeah. yeah. You can do the same. You can call and call and call and call until you get a hold of somebody mm -hmm. and then pray. But how's our communication? We got to communicate. And some of us are like, 
I try to communicate. I try to call, but that brother doesn't answer quickly. But that brother doesn't answer at all. Or that brother doesn't return check texts. It says on his on his cell phone that he's going to re return a phone call within 24 hours, and he doesn't. Oh. We'll go to the next person. Notification and I hope that's not you. I hope that's not you, sister. But we have to communicate much better. Right. So we can be there for each other. Bill used to challenge me all the time. Bro, you need to answer your phone. You need to answer your text. I'm getting better, though, bro. Ooh. Getting better. Amen. Mm -hmm. Am I getting better? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Getting better. <laughs> guys, this morning, I'm going to challenge you. Some of you guys, you just need to step it up in singing. You need to sing. Why? Because you're going to be singing in heaven. I bring it up all the time. But they're going to be singing to heaven all the time. Yep. Yeah. And if you don't like singing here on earth, you're not going to like heaven at all. Because no. that's all they're going to be doing. The angels are going to be rejoicing. The, the, the apostles are going to be rejoicing. The, the disciples are going to be rejoicing. And you're and you're not going to like it there. Because you don't like to do it here. Mm, right. And the same thing with reading your scriptures. Mm. Some of you just don't want to read the Bible. But you're going to be listening to God all the time. I can't wait because I'm going to ask a lot of questions. And I'm going to listen. I think there's going to be more people asking questions. I'm like, yeah, no, what about that one? <laughs> yeah, I heard that. I like, what about that? Be sassy. Not going to be sassy. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I want to listen. And we want to listen now. The answers, guys, all the answers yes. are in the Bible. They're right. all there. That's true. I want to challenge you to go after that. Singing and reading the scriptures. You know that the Bible is, is seventh grade reading material? Mm -hmm. You can read it. Mm -hmm. Everybody in here can read it. Yeah. And if you have a hard time with it, we'll help you. Yep. Yeah. If you don't know where to start, ask the person that brought you this morning. Yeah. If you don't know where to start, I mean, I used to do that. I used to ask wiser people. I was like, you know, I'm really having a hard time reading my Bible. What do I do? What, what do you do? And if they say this, just do this. Yeah. Don't do that. <laughs> but they should give you uh some wise wisdom you know if you're struggling with hey what am i supposed to do as a disciple read the book of acts because mm -hmm. that shows you what they did in the, the first century church we they were a new church we're a new church learn from acts some of us have to do acts outlines did you think i was going to forget about that oh, <laughs> bring it all got to do acts outlines right? okay so wow, what better way to go through the book of Acts and learn what we're supposed to do? Right? Maybe you're lacking wisdom, then read Proverbs yeah. and Ecclesiastes. Yeah. yeah. You know, maybe you're struggling in your prayer life. Well, then read Psalms. Mm -hmm. All the answers are in the scriptures. Yep. Amen. Amen. Yeah. But I think the main thing is we just got to deny ourselves because sometimes we're just flat out selfish. Yeah, uh, true. Selfish and we're lazy. Yeah. We and especially for me, I I get a day off. I'm like, I'm it's all about me. It's me time. It's about what I want to do. No, it's not. Not as a disciple. No. Nope. We're we're here on a, we're here for a short a short while here on this earth, and yep. so we mm -hmm. got to give and serve while we're here. Yes. Earth, right. Amen. Amen. And our last point: a mother's love. A mother worries about us so much that she loves us and she's concerned about what we're about to do. And there's a there's an interaction between Jesus and his mother, and she's feeling this way. A mother's love. Let's turn to Luke chapter eight. Is this helping you guys this morning? Yeah, yeah. bro. You know, there's. I know it's about Mother's Day, but we gotta have to be challenged too. Yeah, we do, Pastor. <laughs> Luke chapter eight. Oh, Scott. Nineteen through twenty. It says, now Jesus' mother and brothers came to see him, but they were not able to get near him because of the crowd. Someone told him, your mother and brothers are standing outside waiting to see you. He replied, my mother and brothers are those who hear God's word and put it into practice. And, you know, Luke is awesome because I don't know if you know this, but the, the account of Luke, it's been said that he actually interviewed Mary mm -hmm. to get what he wrote down in the book of Luke. Mm -hmm. So this is a real interaction that Mary's having with Jesus. Think about that. 
She's coming to get Jesus. And all these people are like you. They're, they're, they're listening to Jesus. And it'd be like the mother and the, and, and, and the brothers. You got to bring the brothers, right? Mm -hmm. uh, to come get Jesus. And he's like, no, no, no. This is, these are my mothers and brothers. Mm -hmm. Those who do the will of the Father. How do you think Mary's feeling right about now? Mm -hmm. I think the brothers are feeling, how dare him? But you didn't realize that's your mother. You're talking to your mother. You know, we're going to take you out back after this, right? The brothers, you know how the brothers are, you know? We're going to teach you a lesson. But he was like, no, this, these people are my mothers, my brothers. Those who do the yeah. will of the Father. And, and, and we're going to learn later how they responded. But Jesus knew the importance of loving God first. Let's go to Psalms Chapter one. Mm. Challenging easel here. <laughs> Psalms one. What is the will of the Father? Because that's what he's challenging us to do, right? Right. Mm. Psalms chapter one, one through three. Did they know the will of the Father? It says, Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked. Or stand in the way that sinners take. Or sit in the company of mockers. But whose delight is in the law of the Lord. And who meditate on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water. It's refreshing. You guys ever feel like when you, when you read your Bible, it's refreshing? Yeah, it does. I know that it's not refreshing when you don't read your Bible. But then when you do, you're like, wow, it feels so refreshed. Oh, it makes you yeah. feel so good. Yeah. Which yields its fruit in season. You want to be fruitful? Mm -hmm. Yes. The Bible starts with the Bible. What? Being fruitful, helping somebody else become a Christian. That's what that yeah. means. And whose leaves do, does not wither. Whatever they do, prosper. It seems like when you obey God, everything that you do prospers. Yes. Yes. Not so the wicked. They are like chaff that the wind blows away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked leads to destruction. How is your time in the word? How is your time reading the scriptures every day? What does God want us to do? I'm going to go there. I told Jamie I was going to go there this morning. Matthew 28, 18 through 20. Mm -hmm. What does yeah. he want us to do? Yep. I don't even have to turn there because you know it by heart. Yep. Come on. Then Jesus came to them and said, What? All authority. So if Jesus has all authority, what is he calling us to do? Make disciples. Just go make disciples. Dan said it. Can you make a disciple if you're not a disciple? I, that's what the world teaches out there. You can actually make a disciple if you're not a disciple. Can you be a veterinarian if you don't go to veterinarian school? No. Can you be a teacher, Mylin, if you don't go to college? <laughs> no. <laughs> right. And then once you graduate, Mylin, then, then you're a teacher, right? Nope. No. <laughs> what, what do you got to do? You got to go teach, or you have to go get your credentials. Yeah, you got you to take a test. Yeah. yeah. And then you can go teach, right? Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> you have to go see if you can sink or swim. Yeah. You got to go in the classroom and go, hey, can I actually teach? So, why would it be any different as a disciple? You got to be taught and trained. Are you being taught and trained to make disciples? Of just Tucson? No. no. I keep saying that, but we got to be focused on. Because I think sometimes we get, we get really comfortable in Tucson. Mm -hmm. We really get complacent and comfortable here. And so when we, when we say something like, hey, we're going to have a conference in, in Los Angeles, you're like, Oh, <laughs> Los Angeles. Why are we going to Los Angeles? <laughs> well, because all the disciples from all over the world are there. And then you get to actually see it instead of seeing it on a video. Right. You're like, oh, I saw that guy. And he's here today and he's preaching. Oh, on, he just wow. came out and talked to me and inspired me to go somewhere else. Yeah. Right? Yeah. All nations. When we go to Phoenix, why are we going to Phoenix? So I can encourage the church there so yeah. we can encourage the church there and go listen the money that you helped us with it's 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 got dividends 
Yeah. yeah. Right. We we're making disciples in Tucson. We're doing something great. We have song Come leaders. On. We can actually preach, and we're doing some great things in Tucson. And it's because of your heart. And so we want to give back to you. Come on. I need you to support me as I go and do that. Yeah, come on. Who's going with me to Phoenix next week? Yeah, amen. So true. It's gonna be awesome. We gotta, and then, and then once we 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 do that, then we can go back to our old way of life. No. Yeah. And I keep saying that too, but that's sometimes what we want to do. Yeah. We want to just check out. I've done that, Mike. Mike's like, I just want to check out. So I I did that yeah. yesterday. I was like, I'm tired. I'm gonna take a nap. Mm -hmm. I just want to check out. But we can't do that. We've got to keep serving. We've got to keep loving. Yeah. Matthew 28, 18 through 20. My paper's going to fall off here. Oh. <laughs> Take your time, Pastor. What does Jesus want us to do? He wants you to multiply. Yeah. He wants you to make somebody just like you. And then that person's going to make somebody into a disciple. That's how we're going to grow. Yeah. It's not hard, but we're not quite there yet. We're not a multiplying ministry, but we can be one disciple at a time, one making yeah. one. And, I, and, and I'm going to be honest, sometimes we can get discouraged. Yeah. We studied the Bible all the way through with somebody, maybe, and they're like, you know what? I don't want to do this in my life. Yep. But what did you learn from that? Mm -hmm. I, I did that uh, a week ago. We studied the Bible with somebody that was a Seventh day Adventist, and they practice on Saturday. And then we, we went through some extensive research and we had to do some major study so that we could refute this false doctrine. And then he's like, no, thank you. I'm going to do something else. Why did we go through that? Why did me and Mike go through that? Because the next person we met was the same thing. Uh -huh. yeah. And this time we were ready. Uh -huh. And he's like, you know what? I'm going to worship with you guys on Sunday. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. That's why we go through it. So we can learn. Come on. So we can be ready for the next person. So yeah. I think we get discouraged. I think yeah. we're like, oh, no, God is, God knows what he's doing. Come on, God. God knows what he's doing in Tucson. Yeah. We just yeah. got to get on board with his plan. Right. So let's go to first, uh, let's go to Acts chapter one, verse 13 and 14, coming in for a landing. Come on, bro. This is good. Acts chapter 1, 13 through 14. It says, when they arrived, they went upstairs to the room where they were staying. Those present were Peter, John, James, and Andrew, Philip, and Thomas, Bartholomew, and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. They all joined together constantly in prayer. They're praying together, guys, yeah. along with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus and his brothers. Do you guys catch that? Yep. Yeah. Who's a part of the ministry now? Jesus. Yep. Because Jesus didn't give in to his sentimentality. I'll say it one more time. Because Jesus didn't give in to his sentimentality. Yeah. His mother joins and yeah. his brothers join the movement. Yeah. True. The fast growing movement of God. We can't get sentimental either. We want to get sentimental on convictions because we love. Do you not think that God loves your family more than you do? Right. Wow. Do you think that God loves your friend more than you do? He does. So we can't give in sentimentality. We got to tell the truth. We got to yeah. share the scriptures, even when it hurts. Yeah, come on. And the truth will set you free. Exactly. I'm going to tell you, when I first started studying the Bible, I'm, I almost walked away. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the reason is because there was this guy named Chris Bloomquist. And he and he was like, you are this, 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 this. It was during the, the light and darkness study. We we're going over sin. He goes, this is who you are. And, and guess what? And by the way, you were supposed to write a sin list and you didn't do it. What is that? It's a half a page. It's not even half a page. You don't care about how you hurt God. And I was mad. It's like, who? how dare this guy? He doesn't even know who I am. Well, he's challenging me like this. And then I walked away and I was like, he was right. <laughs> he was so right because I didn't care about anybody. And I didn't want to look at all the bad things in my life. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to keep studying the Bible because these guys are willing to tell me the truth even when it hurts. Mm -hmm. They love me. 
We can't be sentimental when yeah. we're studying the Bible. We can't be sentimental with our family members. We can't be sentimental with the lost. Yeah. This morning, we can't allow our feelings and emotions to cloud our judgment. We got to listen to God's word. We need to obey God yeah. and make disciples in Tucson. Some of us, you know what? We haven't made a disciple yet. You can do it. You have every resource at your disposal. Yeah, come on, come and if on. you don't know how to do it, then go with a sister and learn how. Yeah. If you don't know how to do it, then go with a brother and learn how. But make a disciple. Don't waste God's time. Yeah, come on. I think about that sometimes. I'm like, you know what? Did I waste God's time today? Right. Ooh. You know, there was a time when I was in, in, in uh, ICCM and uh, Tim Kernan was preaching. And he was like, you know what? I'll live for 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. Each and every part of the day, I live for 10 minutes. What did I do in this last 10 minutes? Did I waste God's time? Wow. And then he's thinking that way all the time. Did I waste God's time? Did I waste God's time? Am I ready to go? Are the people in my life, are they ready to go? I'm going to live for today. Because I might not get tomorrow. They might not get tomorrow. Yeah. You can look at the tabloids. You can look yeah, at the news. You true. see what's going on around the world. So much, Pastor. So much. We got to live as if it's our last. For, for ourselves and for others. Yes. We need to share the good news with our family, friends, our co-workers, and anyone who walks. Yes. And again, if you don't know where to start, ask the person that brought you this morning. A mother's heart. <laughs> Mary's heart. Heart of intuition. A heart to communicate with God and with others in love. Yes. And a mother's love that listens to Jesus. Are you listening to Jesus this morning? This morning, let's have a great Mother's Day. Come on, yeah. yeah. Loving up on our family, our friends, and our mothers, and to strive to have the heart of Jesus and Mary. Yeah. And to God be all the glory. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. Give it up for Scott one more time. Yeah. Our mothers out there, once again, happy Mother's Day. Uh, bro, this was an amazing lesson. Uh, it made me really reflect back on uh, my mom. And my name is Isaiah. This is my amazing wife, Chelsea. Come on. Uh, really to to your Life Campus Ministry. Uh, but like I'll say, like this, this, this lesson helped me really reflect on my mom and then all she's done for me. Uh, so it's your mom. She was very uh, stringent and, and very made sure that we did well in school. Yes. Uh, that me and my brothers were, you know, uh, hardworking, you know, somewhat, you know, obedient men in the world, you know, making sure that we didn't get us in trouble. But one thing she did do, uh, similarly about, you know, Mary, you know, she's talking about Jesus and God, is that she always prayed for me and my brothers. Wow. Right? Oh, uh, then I was a little kid, and when I would go to church with her, I would fall asleep. She still prayed over me. <laughs> right? She still prayed over me and my brothers. Even to this day, you know, for myself being a disciple, she still prays when I, until I'm preaching, she prays for me. Wow. Right? Or uh, when I was getting uh, engaged and I was going through uh, preparing for our wedding, she was praying for me and Chelsea. Now she prays for Chelsea. Oh, uh, I always had that heart to pray for those she cares about and pray for those <laughs> who may not be the most loving people. And she's always been uh, a, a woman who prays for her enemies, right? Those who stand in opposition against her. And I just know that's a great heart, but knowing how, you know, without prayer, there's no way for her to take the city. And we show it to other people's mothers, yeah. right? There's other people who are right. in this room who mothers aren't saying, who don't know the truth, that we get the opportunity to share with here in Tucson, yes. right? Know that somebody True. like my mom will become a disciple. I still have yeah. that hope. <laughs> I still have that faith yeah. till this very day. Um, yeah. So I'm just super excited, bro. That was just an amazing lesson. I love yeah, that. Yeah. I want to pass it off to my wife. Uh, yeah, awesome. Sorry, my earring fell off and it really <laughs> off. And I, was I was like, yeah, I'm going to share this. And it <laughs> fell off and I was like, well, dang. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, um, but yeah, I, I loved it. I think, again, like what Isaiah said, it just is a lot of reflecting. Um, and, uh, you know, unlike me, my mom, yeah, she prayed, but she was of a Muslim faith. Um, mm -hmm. And I just love Acts 1. It's so, so encouraging to me because me and my mom didn't have a close relationship. Mm -hmm. um, I was actually way closer to my grandmother. And she mm -hmm. was somebody I considered my mom. And yeah. she was somebody of, a, you know, Christian faith. <laughs> um, yeah. And, um, and she would always try to put and tell me like, oh, you're going through a hard time. She would give me like the pocketbook Psalms. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> the small one. The small one, she'll give it to me. She's like, here, read this every day. This is going to help you. 
you need to pray you need to do this and I just really I'm just was really encouraged and just as my journey of becoming a disciple and being a disciple you know my mom being inspired by my faith you know we went from not talking at all to like it says in Acts 1 you know who was there uh Peter John James uh Andrew Philip Thomas and you know going down it says this is Mary <laughs> you know and the two brothers and just seeing how because Jesus put his foot down, his mom joined him. Yeah. She went from somebody who's like, you're crazy, low-key a persecutor to somebody who's rocking with Jesus mm -hmm. and is now a disciple yeah. following God. And, and just seeing how after years and just putting my foot down and praying for my mom that she is now open to me sharing scriptures with her. I've given her Leanne Kernan's book, Paper Tigers. Yes, and she read it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and just yeah. seeing like how putting my foot down, but also loving my mother and praying for her, seeing how that has changed her heart and has had her be in a place where now she's open to hear God where before she was hostile. And it just made me think of like how much more I need to love and pray for the people like I prayed for my mom. Yeah. Yes. You know? yes. And I'm still praying with my mom because she's not there yet. <laughs> you know, she's now. taking steps. You know, she's letting me share scriptures when she's going through a hard time. Yeah. She's reading her Bible. And we go back and forth. Um, but just seeing, like, I need to have that same fight for people. I need to have that same fight for my brothers and sisters. There's been times where I'm not so fighty. You know, I, I'm like, oh, you know, we'll get it. <laughs> like, oh, they're just like, we got it. But knowing that, you no, know, God puts me in this family to help and encourage. Yes. Um, but thank you for that, for this, bro. This is really helpful. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. I just really love how you entitled the lesson of Mother's Heart because they're really brings it all together. A mother's heart is somebody who deeply loves one another, deeply loves people, whether they're strangers yep. or people you've known for years. Yep. And families really learn how to take it to the next level to really propel not only the gospel, but propel your heart and your walk with God to the next level. We need to get deeper in Bible study, so please study the Bible here or brought you out. Um, you know, I know you may have some other these plans, but set up a study for this week, mm -hmm. you know, uh, to really get in, in the Word, really learn what it means to have Mary's love right because yes. this all is just an example of how god loves us the church yes. right and this is a super amazing family so let's go after that today scott thank you so much for another lesson we have one final song so we're gonna yeah. bring up the song leaders. Come on. Come on. Yeah. 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 God, I'm reading a song. Oh, <laughs> right. Okay, sorry about that. <laughs> Come on. All right. Come on, Scott. Hail, hail, Judah. Hail, hail, Judah. Hail, hail, Judah. Was dead. In my sin, my 